Welcome to Haxby Shed. This video is about this tapping head and this, possibly the world's most over-engineered bracket. The video is getting a bit long, so I made it into two parts, but I tried to make each part interesting in its own right. So I hope you enjoy them. Quite a few weeks ago now, I bought this tapping head from eBay. It was £21 delivered. So to give you an idea of scale, to the bottom of this chuck here is 11 inches. And the Morse taper is Morse taper 2. I couldn't get the scale of it from the eBay pictures, so I had really no idea what I was going to get. The only clue to the make that I've got is, if you can see that, K1 on the bottom there. There's no other manufacturer's marking. I think possibly at one point there was a label on it because there's two pinholes there. One there, one, one there, one there. So there may have been a label pinned on, I'm not sure. The only other thing I know about it really is that it's metric in construction because for this reaction bar here it's threaded at the bottom and it's a 12 millimeter thread. It's auto reversing there doesn't appear to be a clutch. I've had a little bit of a mess about with it already. Um, I've had the bottom off it and it's full of grease inside. Now I don't think it should be. There's a lot of drag on it, a lot of drag on this reaction bar uh, when it's just spinning without cutting. And uh, so I'm gonna clean it out inside. This tap came with it, 10 millimeter tap. It's not spiral, it's straight, but it looks like a good tap. When you're doing this sort of thing on camera, really concentrating on the job, not on the video, it's easy to uh, do all the things that you don't even think about, like humming, singing, sniffing, muttering, and all that. Well, you can see the grease in there. Anyway, after the muttering and the singing and the humming, you realise uh, it's a great looking video, but the sound's terrible because you've messed it up. So I'm going to clean all that grease out of here. Just brake cleaner. I've stripped it apart and cleaned most of the grease off it. And I've set it up here as a kind of exploded diagram. So here's the main body. This is the Morse taper drive shaft and this is the driving gear here. Below that we've got the driven gear. There's a peg, if you can see it there, that peg, which engages into the Morse taper shaft to keep it all aligned. There's a couple of pegs here on each gear and a, a short shaft which creates a dog clutch basically. And this driven gear takes its drive from the driving gear through these two reversing gears. So when this is direct drive, that peg against this driven gear, it's going in forward motion. But when this peg drops against this peg through these gears, it's in reverse. I hope that makes sense. So it's just a one-to-one -one drive in both directions and there is no clutch at all. It's very well made. It's got half shells here, if you can see them, very nice. And various oil holes, which were blocked by the grease, which doesn't help anything. Not very sophisticated, but a nice unit, I think. Well, that's cleaned up and ready to go back together. You can see the driving gear, and then these two gears that are involved in changing the direction of drive. And then on this side, hopefully, you can see this dog that moves backwards and forwards between the driving gear and the driven gear to give you your forward and reverse. So I'll slip it back together now. I've managed to cut myself, I always cut myself. I don't know how I do it. So I now know that the oiler holes for this are here 
and here and here. And the shafts are drilled out with cross holes to oil it. This is forward direction. And when you want to reverse the tap out, you simply lift the drill spindle. This drops down and it reverses the tap out. I got this today. It's a Morse Taper 4, Morse Taper 2 adapter sleeve. I got tired of swapping sleeves around. So I've got that for about £7.50 delivered new, which I thought was a decent price. I would normally get a lot of my stuff from the Auto Jumble, but because of Covid and other things, I haven't been for about a year and eventually you get tired of waiting and you know I still might have to make three or four visits to the auto jumble which are normally once a month to find something like this so eventually you just give up and I thought well honestly you know you can't wait forever I'll just buy one and at that price really I thought it was pretty good okay now then find the right position Nope, there we are. That's it. This reaction arm needs to come up against something to stop the body spinning round. There's several ways to stop this turning. Um, one is to put something on the bed. Did I get it right way? No, that way. And that would stop. It. Another way is to let this go against the pillar. like that. But the disadvantage of doing it that way is, as I operate this, it has to slide up and down this uh, restraining post, let's call it that. So what I'm planning to do is to make something that grips here and fixes onto the collar here and then it would move down with the tapping head. I should add that the reaction pushes the same way, which is clockwise, looking down, whether this is going in forward or reverse, it always pushes the same way. So, I made a prototype <laughs> out of a piece of wood and uh, a wheel brace and a few of the bits. And I've put a couple of blocks of wood here because obviously there's a reaction force here that wants to turn this around and the quill is only secured by a screw that goes into a, a keyway there and it's not all that strong. So I'm going to make a metal bracket to perform this function um, but I'll extend this piece up to here somewhere so that it, the reaction is against the body of the drill rather than being all the reaction on this screw. So what might be the design of a metal bracket then? I'll put that there and I'll just zoom into it. Okay, I'm going to use a piece of six millimeter flat plate, which is a hundred wide and it was 400 long. And that piece of flat plate then will form the main body. And then this is the view from above. So the quill is 74 millimeters in diameter. I'll shape it here and I'll use that shape I've cut off to make a bracket there that sits above. I'll cut some off the length and that will form an upright here which will react against the body of the drill. I've bought some 90mm steel bar which I'll machine out to make a collar here that will fit onto the quill and I'll have a allen screw or something in there just to, to lock that up. And then I'll put something uh, to give the vertical uh, bar. Don't know what yet, I'll figure something out. So that's the basic idea of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is to machine that 74mm hole in that plate piece of uh, 400 by 106 millimeter plate. I've marked out three strips off this plate 
and I'll cut it in the rapidor and you can see I think that I've put a file notch against each one so that the blade doesn't slip when it first starts to cut. Just recently I did a job where I had to swivel these jaws so I need to check and set them at 90 degrees and when you do that you need to do it against the blade not against the bed. Actually that looks pretty good. Number two, number three, coming up. That's three strips cut off and cleaned up. So now I need to think about mounting that big piece of flat plate in the lathe to cut that whole 74 millimeters. I've marked out the two sides of the drill casting and then the center line. So we'll try that on the lathe and see what the swing looks like. I've just used a center to hold the plate in place at the point where I popped it. And then I can have a look to see how it swings. And it's no surprise that I'll have to take the gap out. And it may or may not clear this. I may have to take some corners off this yet. So we'll get the gap out and just see where we are. And the idea is to uh, put it on a face plate, of course. The gap comes out. I'm doing this big bolt at the end here. And then there's two screws, one either side. And then with the screws undone, the block just lifts off. And this bolt, it won't come out. It has to come off with the block. There we go. The block comes off complete with its own little bit of rack gear. And there's a peg on the bottom to locate it. These surfaces are scraped, as you can see. It's a nice little thing, actually. Well, it swings without hitting anything. Just clears this lead screw. Perfect. So now I need to look at getting it onto the face plate. I've got three face plates to choose from. The one nearest the camera is a cross T-slotted face plate. And it's good for objects that you need to clamp in the center. But it's no good for what we're trying to do here. The second smaller one is the standard Harrison nine and a quarter inch face plate that comes with a lathe. And the large one is the optional 15 inch face plate. This decision is not quite as easy as you might imagine. With the small face plate, I can get a clamp in each of these corners. I'm trying to show with my toe, but the problem is that the work sticks right off the end. Now with this one, it might be okay if I use those holes where I've put the pen and the bolt and they're symmetrical opposites and I can clamp the uh, work much nearer the back. Well, it swings fine below, but I remember it hits that guard. And when I made this bracket, I thought about this. So this has to be unbolted here and swiveled to the top and it should clear the guard. Worst case, I'll take it off. A bit of work to adjust all that, but better safe than sorry. So the next thing to do is to clamp it to the face plate. Well, it took a bit of fiddling about, but the clamps are on. I've clamped the saddle with it stopped just at the end of the short bed. And I've also taken off the screw cutting indicator dial because I would guarantee if I make a mistake, I would smash it. So better safe than sorry. But it does mean that I need to use a long boring bar to reach the work. I'm going to try to cut this here rather than drilling in the middle and then boring out. Because I'm going to try and keep this big penny if I can. It might come in useful another time. This is a bit painful really because I don't have a right handed boring bar. So what I'll do is I'll move the bar to the other side and run the lathe in reverse. Well I've decided that was just too much hard work and not very practical. So I'm just going to bore it out in the normal way starting by drilling a hole. 
that'll do. The problem with this is, with the great lump spinning round all the time and the bright light, it's absolutely mesmerising. You can hypnotise yourself if you're not careful. About a mil and a half to go, I think. Well, quite a bit of work for just one hole. But I really enjoyed that, so let's see if it's going to fit on the drill. So, is it going to fit? Well, that's a yes. Even the gearbox looks happy. I'm going to make a slight change to the design. I'm going to cut triangles off at both sides and then I'm going to use those as ribs underneath and weld them along. I'll clean those up on the shaper. It's almost beneath the dignity of a shaper to be used just to clean those up, but it'll give it an outing anyway and I'll enjoy it. I've set the shaper up for an 8 inch stroke, about 60 strokes per minute and that should give me a cutting rate of about 20 metres per minute. Well the shape has made quite a tidy job of that and the big boss will go here when it arrives and I can machine that up.